Hello everyone, this is the Lego Creator Expert, Back to the Future Time Machine, don't call it a DeLorean. I bought this for $170 US and built it live over on Twitch. This includes two new exclusive Back to the Future 2 figures on a stand, and you get all the parts that you need to build this into any of the three major versions, major movie versions of the time machine DeLorean. And I'm going to start with the original movie version here because it's the simplest and the one that looks most like just the plain car. And I think immediately you can see that this looks pretty dang good. So, so, so much better from the last, well, not the last, but the first Back to the Future DeLorean that they did, which was the one from Kuso. What the ideas system was called previously, but then they also did just a tiny one for <laughs> dimensions that doesn't really count. I personally like most of what I see here, shaping wise, fit and finish wise. That is a print work uh, right there. Although most of the decorations you're gonna see throughout this will be stickers. This is another major print, which is shared between all four wheels and it looks very good. I'm glad that they actually have a gray colored pin inside of there. The build process felt pretty good had some things along the way that felt a little bit advanced and required a little bit of finagling to make sure that everything lined up properly. But I feel like it was an appropriate level of uh, complexity, you know, uh, an appropriate skill level that was required to get this thing assembled. And there were a handful of small weird issues in the instructions. Ones that you can easily figure out if you just look at it. If you get, if you get stumped at any point and you know, things don't seem like they're going to turn out properly, it's probably because they're not. So just look a little bit more carefully, skip ahead a step and see, well, you know, what was, what was actually done wrong. Just really, really small things. I think that they need to be a little bit slower now. There's, it feels more and more like Lego is moving too quickly to put out too many products, uh, you know, just back to back to back to back to back. And I, I feel like they're starting to suffer a little bit from that in the design department, as well as the instruction department, which is, you know, kind of uh, uh, a, a service within the company that works together with design and they go back and forth. In terms of design elements that I do not like here, I definitely have to point out this gap right here. I wish that that was closer together and it kind of feels like it should be able to be closer together pretty easily just by changing the position of the uh, stud with bar on the side because I, I can have a gap down here and it'll be a lot less visible than a gap up here. So I think just pulling that up a little bit would have done well. Color choice is pretty good throughout most of this. The other thing that I don't like about this design wise is the side window design. You know, it's mirrored from side to side and it's just, it's just so short in height it's because they put these cheese, this whole row of cheese slopes in here, which just, it just ain't right. Everything else is really, really good, but this should be much taller. The, the DeLorean being from the era that it is from has a much taller window. This is more like a, a modern muscle car kind of high shouldered look. So take those out, replace them with just a single long, uh, a one by eight or you know a couple of one by four tiles down there and i personally think it'll look much better this is really impressive to me the a pillars they're connected with ball joints at either end and they just fit in there very 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 snugly the windscreen is actually a new piece it looks very very familiar but it's not it's very similar to the one that was exclusive originally to the creator expert F40, which was done to a different scale. What I like most about this is that there is not a single scuff on this. It is absolutely in perfect, immaculate, pristine condition, mint almost. That's because it came shipped with this around it, individually wrapped. This is a, a partially lightly adhesive uh, plastic piece. It's probably hand wrapped. And this is exactly what I've been asking for, for a long, long time, especially for these more expensive kits that have exclusive pieces that are easy to, to scratch and that will really, really diminish the value of the whole thing. If they're damaged right out of the box. Yeah, they, they listened and they actually did the right thing here. And I very much appreciate that. Most of this obviously is done in just regular light gray, but you have some strips of the 
the drum lacquered silver. And this, of course, is a separatable element. It has the black colored shepherd's, uh, what do you call that? Hook? No, not... Uh, Staff, Shepherd's Staff, which is new. There are actually two of them included in the set. You only need to use one, but two are included, which makes it a little bit more convenient to do one of the conversions to a different movie version. The level of of greebling in here, I think, is nice. Most of the colors that I see from the outside look pretty appropriate. And that is a, a print right there. It's an existing print that we've gotten before. These side pillars on here are actually full sub-assemblies, and they're attached with three uh, corner uh, hinge plates behind each. There's one up here, there's one back here, and there's one out here, which is super impressive to me because this whole thing just fits in from the side and it fits in so tightly. The gaps are absolutely tiny around here. I mean, this is all, you know, very nicely brought together, but just how this fits in, I, I never expected it to be so secure. It's it's really secure. In general, I feel good about the durability of this. I'm not worried about anything falling off, just you know, moving it around the place and everything. These are nice and secure, put together well. This is, of course, a, a sticker there that's actually done on a window piece, interestingly, rather than using a, a tile. It's a window pane and you can swap that out as I will show you later. Okay, let me let me, let me me open things up. So noth nothing can be done back here other than pushing a button down. I'll show you what that's about in just a minute. But the doors, of course, open, and of course they have to be gull wing doors. It has to be accurate, and it is. One thing that's not accurate, <laughs> wait, what's going on there? Yeah, for me, this is unusual. For me, one of these, if I just leave it, will stay open. No, it looks like it's started to loosen up. You know what? This used to stay open. So there's a, there's a little bit of difference in the, the friction in the pins. It's just Technic pins. Obviously, this one's falling much more quickly. But there's there's generally, and most people have, have encountered, not enough uh, friction in there to hold these up at all. So it's it's nice to be able to get this shot. Like, okay, take the picture. <laughs> right, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Uh, take the picture. There we go. But yeah, they didn't include anything in the design to hold these up. And it would have been really simple to include something. I'm fine with this not having enough friction just right through the, the roof strut right there. But it could have been just something that just flips out. And I'm sure tons of people are going to come up with really, really easy solutions to fix that. Inside, of course, there are sculpted up seats. And it's actually not too difficult to see detail because you do get a lot of light in due to the large size of the, the windscreen, you know, that's a lot of light in. From the top, you do have some printed console pieces in there, of course. The flux capacitor is back there. That one is a little bit difficult to see without doing some, some disassembly, but it has a sticker over it. There's a triangular piece inside, which is a grappling hook. And if I push the button that's up on the roof that I mentioned earlier, push that down, it lights up because there is a light brick inside of it. And that looks, that looks pretty dang good to me. You know, I mean, again, it does have a sticker. Unfortunately, I do have some uh, some bubbles in there. I didn't get it completely flattened down, but that's generally what that looks like. And there's nothing to to hold it down. You know, they're they're always going to set these up to where they will automatically release. But just generally, the, the interior detail I think is done pretty well. They did use or did rely upon stickers for most of the panels that are exclusive in here. And that completely makes sense to me. The steering wheel is large and is able to be rotated around, but it is not connected to the wheels. And there's a good reason for that this time around, which I will show you soon. Uh, one thing I definitely don't like to see here is the visibility of off-colored parts. You got the yellow, you got the dark orange, and also the tan back there. That's just uncharacteristic for this. There are also some red pieces but again, there are there are actual reasons for those. Technically, those could have been made in black. At least those upper parts of this assembly could have been made in black and would have been a little bit, well, a lot less obvious. But oh yeah, around this side. Hello, door. <laughs> Had good luck for a little bit, but the luck ran out. You can see more. Oh yeah, also the, is that a cool, cool yellow? No, I think that's just a regular yellow color back there. The tan over here. If I can get a focus, yeah, tan over here doesn't doesn't bug me on the inside, but just some of those little things. Given that this is a very high cost collector model, you know, this is not a toy, 
And this is not for folks who, the whole model is not for folks who are new to Lego. So I think that it's important to prioritize in the designs of these types of sets, the look, you know, and the presentability. Underneath the hood, you're not gonna find engine detail on this one. Some people have had trouble opening the, the hood, uh, which uh, I, I personally have not had that issue, but Lego actually thought about that in advance because everything seals down so nicely with very small gaps there. You know, you, you need fingernails to, to get under there a little bit. It's not too big of a deal. But if you have any issue with that, you do have access to these little little orange pieces and there's a way to get underneath, to get, to get a finger underneath the, the, the fender well here, the wheel well to access that. And I'll, again, I'll show you that in a minute, but those are Borok eyes, old pieces. And in here, they just have storage for some stuff, some memorabilia. So you got the, the hoverboard here, which is just donned up with a single large sticker. It's a very simple build, much simpler than I thought it would be. And so that's from the second movie, but this is from the first movie, the crate of plutonium, also done up with just stickers, handle with care. It's got plutonium inside. And this of course can be opened up. I think you saw the, the hinge on the other side. Yeah, that's that's just that, you know, just a couple, couple of things. And otherwise it's fairly simple inside. A couple more parts of interest I wanna point out before I move on to the conversion to the second movie version of it. First of all, this piece right here that is used three times on either side is a new mold. You may have seen that on the Mandalorian's N1, modified N1 Starfighter. It's, it's a two by four piece with an interesting slope. So it's sloped on both sides and then it also angles up and it's in just a regular uh, a regular light bluish gray here. I'm sure we'll see this in different colors in, in the future, but there you can see its bottom profile it actually has a little step in the side of it. And it's a, it's a funky, interesting piece, a highly specialized uh, a slope piece. It is symmetrical, so you can see the other side there, symmetrical from side to side. And it's just interesting. But then this flexible hose piece or flexible, mm, what is that? It's not a tube, I mean, it's solid. This flexible piece here, <laughs> in black for the very first time. That's fantastic for wiring. Are you kidding me? I need like a thousand of those for detailing up a city. So many people are going to want all of those in black. Hopefully they will be made available in tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of sets to come. Remember when these first came out in silver, they were in very high demand, very useful neutral color. Now we get them in black, which is just fantastic. And I think they're used to very good effect here. All right, now I'm gonna take this thing into the future with the second movie, 2015 parts. So this is just a little bit of a shroud for the nuclear reactor, a different insert for the window piece with a different sticker on it for the futuristic license plate. And all important, of course, is Mr. Fusion. This, this is good. This is very recognizable and I think it's done very well. It's really interesting. It uses two stickers here and inside of that one by two Technic lift arm right there are some half, uh, half pins with the stud on top. Let's see if I can pop this off. Yeah, you can see it in there just a little bit. Half pin with the stud on top in white. Never seen that color before. That's very cool. And inside of this, you can't open the whole thing up, but you got uh, a can and a banana, you know, just to be appropriate. And this is the pressure cooker style lock on the side. And there it is set up with Mr. Fusion with the adapter plate and just a handful of very, very small details not included with this particular variation. Also swapped out the license plate at the back. That you may have heard is difficult to do. It is indeed difficult to do because you need to, to pull this out. There's a little way that you can get maybe a tool in from the top when this adapter plate isn't in place to help pop that out. But uh, it took a little bit of disassembly to get that in there since it is after all a, a pop in pretty well secured uh, window pane, you know, those are really not intended to be removed from the front. They're intended to be popped out from the back. So you got to get access in there. It was a little bit more difficult than I would have hoped. Um, hopefully there are some modifications that the community will come up with to make that a lot easier to do. But overall, this one's a pretty straightforward transformation. The only thing that's missing here is for the, the hover transformation to, to take place where the, the wheels will turn sideways. And for that, well, 
I go built something into the to the whole thing. It's it's this. You see, it's 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 this that whole red thing underneath, as you can see from the interior a bit. It's it's a huge activation lever in in red to make sure that you know that it's there. Make sure that you can see it. So again, I, I feel like the parts that are visible from the interior could have been black, but this being red under here, you know, doesn't really matter. Um, you know, because you're not going to see it. But this mechanism works really well. It is somewhat complex, but not too much. Like you can see how many gears are used. Uh, it does use rubber bands all throughout, but it does lock into place. Technically can be operated uh, by a single hand if you have a good grip on it, something like that. Um, the wheels end up looking a little bit too small and it would be nice to be able to keep them around there and maybe have them be just protruding a little bit more. But all in all, I think that this was implemented pretty well. And I think it was a good compromise to go with that instead of steering for this. I think this is much more important than working steering. And who knows, maybe somebody will come up with a custom solution that will allow steering as well. It definitely will not be as as uh, as durable as this, I, I guarantee. Not within this, this scale, this same space. Also, when you have it in hover mode, you've got these clear pieces, clear bricks underneath which right now are scraping the ground in, in this form, but I've moved them to the place that they, they wanted, or they suggested you put them in to have the whole thing hovering above the ground. So it's not on the surface, but when you have it in its wheeled form, you'll move those farther out and then the, the whole thing will drop down and there will be clearance. But it's nice that those pieces were included. Overall, this I think works well. And I think this is very displayable just like that. The Back to the Future 3 version uses the most parts, which honestly feels pretty satisfying to me because ultimately I do want to get my money's worth out of this. And this, you know, leaves the, the least literally on the table. This whole assembly right here is mostly a standalone thing. You could take the hook from the aerial from the movie one version, but you don't have to because they do include an extra one. And I think there's just one hose here, if I recall correctly, that I had to pull from back here. And, and that's just it. You change up the wheels completely. So you're left with the separate wheels that are that are silver and of course have the, the printed detail in there. The white walls could have been a little bit thicker, but I think that the design here is pretty good. This does uh, because of, I don't know, I don't know exactly what it is, but this does seem to bend just a little bit more. It doesn't have that much more weight on it, but it, uh, it rubs just a little bit. The, the inner shoulders rub just a little bit on the inner wheel well, so it doesn't roll quite as easily. It still rolls, you know, fine enough, but, uh, the original version, the first version rolled a little bit better for me. Nothing else changed back here. So it's just the wheels and swapping this in, which is attached ultimately by some snot bricks that by default are upside down. So you pop the hood, flip those over, stick this on there, which you can assemble uh, separately, except for just uh, that one piece. And that's it. And I think this does a good enough job of, of converting over. It feels, it feels close enough. And, you know, it's most recognizable, I think, with the the red rims on there. So yeah, this is this is good stuff. So let me go ahead and move on to the minifigures, starting with a quick look at the stand. This, of course, is one large sticker on there. And you do have to have the hands forward like that in order for the two figures to fit there. It's awkward to me that it, they don't allow you to have both hands down. You have one hand down, but ultimately you're going to put them into kind of a, a holding hands pose there. Just a, uh, a larger base, I think, <laughs> would have been a little bit more comfortable. These are both obviously exclusive Back to the Future 2 figures, and I'm glad that you know we get something completely different from what was done before, not just updated re-releases. I think that I like the Doc Brown one better between these two, although I was impressed initially by the leg printing, especially on the side for the, the futuristic boots for Marty, but the more I've looked at it, the more I am bothered by the big gap there. You know, the fact that there's no printing in this space. Somebody pointed that out while I was streaming and it, it didn't, you know, while I was building this live, but it didn't, it didn't hit me that much until a little bit later on. I spent some more time. I really like the use of the coral color in there. And these both have very, very fine detail printing and uh, pattern printing in them, which is great to see underneath there. 
Oh, alternate face, yes. Alternate face, that's fantastic. I love that. Show you how that frames up with the hairpiece. Yeah, that looks good. Maybe, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, it's good. I was gonna say, maybe it looks a little bit young, but no. This actually looks better over here. This face, it's a, it's a Han Solo uh, head that they used for Marty there. This one looks better to me than, than the other did. I just feel like this default face here, it's okay, but not, not the best match. I don't know if Lego has any, has any specific print that would have worked better than that without creating something new. Last up, these are the leftover pieces, including the nice flexi part in the new black color. And you got that little print there as well. A couple of drum lacquered pieces. And then this was the clear backed sticker sheet for the flux capacitor overlay. And this was the main sheet. Of course, most of that is just for the, the plaque, but uh, you got the, the board pieces. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's mostly accessory stuff except for the interior, which is pretty important. All right, so the last thing to talk about is the price. It's $170 US. That's modular building money. It's literally exactly what I paid for the modular bookstore. And this is not modular building level of volume of stuff. Just looking at it from the outside. However, of course, I do have to consider what's on the inside. That, that, that matters. If this had been filled up with lots and lots of details back here. If there was a, a built up engine compartment, if it had more mechanical details to it, yes, it has the, the hover conversion, which is, which is very nice. And it's, it's sturdy, it's strong and it's reliable, which is, which is all good. But I feel like it needed to have more things in order for me to be happy with that price. You know, it comes with the two figures, the two figures are fine, but the main build is the main thing that you're paying for here. And yeah, it's pretty clear that Lego knows that folks who are super fans of Back to the Future in particular are willing to pay a premium for this. And that's why they charge this much. And yes, you can always say, well, but they included a brand new design for a single piece here. They, they do that all the time. They do new pieces all the time. Some themes, just little basic themes that most adult fans of Lego uh, completely dismiss will get like a half a dozen brand new pieces and some of them big look at look at the trolls world tour series of of sets like they, they got a bunch of things some of them fairly high quality as well with large amounts of plastic and everything so that is not enough of an excuse to me nor are these figures right here uh nor is the the lone dmc print here on the front these prints the got the uh, drum lacquered pieces. There aren't that many of them. Nah, to me, it's just, it's not enough. So to me, they're clearly banking on folks with deep pocket, deep pockets and deep nostalgia to pay extra for this. That said, if you feel like you're willing to pay that price for this and you like what you see from the surface, I think you will really, really, really enjoy owning this especially having the different versions that you can that you can switch between so you can choose just what you want to have on display. I think that those conversions definitely add a bunch of, of value to this overall in, in the sense of being able to target the individual who likes Back to the Future 2 the most or who likes Back to the Future 3 the most and wants to see those red wheels. Not enough white for the white walls. It's okay, it's, it's good enough. Design-wise, I just really wish that they hadn't designed it this way. You can very easily just swap that out just in terms of the height of the, the wheels, but, or excuse me, the height of the windows here, the side windows. Otherwise, yeah, it has some little quirks. The instructions were wonky in multiple places, but I got through it. It wasn't that big of a deal. And just generally, it's a good set. The designer did a, a fantastic, the designers did a fantastic job with this. And I'm not worried about it falling apart over time. I'm not worried about it having sag issues or I'm not worried about when I grab it, it's good that it's something's going to fall apart, fall off on it. I mean, even the side view mirrors were able to kind of fold out of the way and stuff. The stuff that's, I mean, yeah, it's, it's more than good enough in every single way. So I think it could have been a little bit better, a little bit cheaper. Otherwise, happy with it. Hope that you're happy with this review. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more and I will talk to you again soon.